Thessalonians chapter 5 is where we're going to be. But there were so many, Paul, Paul wrote these letters to the Thessalonians and he spent time with them. There were so many things he had in his memories. That song we sang of precious memories. Paul was in, memorizing the days that he spent with this young church. They were a young church. They were a church that was under persecution. They, they, and he went there. He went there to speak and help them to keep their faith, to keep their hope, to keep their love, to persevere on no matter what come against them. And in doing so, the church would be deeply rewarded. You know, sometimes in life, we have these things called hardships. And through those hardships, we need to learn that we need to persevere. We just need to hang on. Hang on to Jesus. And when we hang on to Jesus, He'll take us through safely to the other side. How many believe that? Say amen. amen. How many times in our lives have we had nothing else to call on but the name of Jesus? And you just look up and you say, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I need you, Jesus, to help me through this. And before you know it, out on the other side you come and you look back and you say thank you Jesus now I know why you've done what you've done and this is what Paul's doing here today he's encouraging them to excel, to expand their faith, to expand their hope to hang on to their hope and not let nothing take that hope away they, he was explaining to give thanks always to God Almighty it was one of those times when you ever been under persecution here in the United States, really, I want you to think about, has the Galilean Baptist Church, have they ever been under persecution from anybody? No, probably about the worst thing that's happened here is the roof leak, maybe a squabble here and there. But have you ever really been under persecution? Have you ever really been under somebody trying to take your faith? Somebody trying to tear you down? Somebody trying to possibly even kill you because of your faith? These people and these apostles experienced that. The disciples experienced it. Have you ever had to face anything like that? And you're sitting there and you're thinking no. And you should be saying, I praise God that I've never faced that type of persecution. Look at Israel. Israel is being persecuted from every side. They got bombs going off left and right over there. But you know who's with them? God Almighty. See, they're persevering. They're strong. They believe in God. They know that their God will save them. They believe that with their whole heart. And that's what Paul is teaching this young church, is to persevere through the hardships, to hang on to their faith, their hope, and their love. That there's, that Paul was, Paul was like, a, a, if he took Timothy, Paul had no kids, and he took Timothy under his wing. And that's what Paul did. Paul would come around and he would take those churches and he would teach them and help them and bless them. And before he left there, most often he made sure they knew what to do. And in, in, First, Thess in First Thessalonians chapter 4, we all know this very well. And my question is, we'll read it and then I'll ask you the question. I'm going to start out in verse 14. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also would sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we are which alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah! And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. One day we know that the Lord Jesus is coming back. We know that all the signs that the Lord told us to look for they're in this book right here called the Holy Scripture. We know that those signs are everywhere. Do we not know that they're everywhere? So what do you and I do? The Bible says that we are to look and watch as we wait for the Lord, as we wait for that eastern sky to bust open and to hear the voice of Jesus say, Come up hither. That's called the rapture. That's what this is talking about. The word caught up will be caught up. 
It's rapizo. And it means to be taken and snatched away. And one day, they're looking for aliens out here. And I believe this with all of my heart. Because they're talking about aliens. They're talking about aliens. But when that rapture happens, and the church is raptured out of here, they've got nothing else to say. Because they're not going to give God any credit for anything. So they're going to say, must have been the aliens that done it. But give God praise. Because it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ that comes and busts that eastern sky open and brings His church home forever to be with Him. And then, hallelujah, we glad God. Now just think about this. They've got to come up with an excuse for all of what happened to all those people. And these the aliens. They're not going to give God the credit. They're not going to give God no credit because they're anti-Christ. They're everywhere. They're in our government. They're in our society. They're in science. They're up and among the elite. They're not going to give the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob credit for nothing. So the angels did it. But you and I know that that time is fast approaching. We know that the signs are here. We see them every day. And they come faster and faster and faster and faster. <laughs> so what do you and I do as we wait? Number one is love your brother. And love him like you've never loved him before. I'm going to go to <clears throat> Thessalonians chapter 5. But at the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. He's telling them, I already know that you know what these signs and what these seasons are. For yourselves know perfectly that day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Even though we see all the signs, we can't get so caught up that we... How was it, Brother Danny said it? You can't become so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. We need to continue to look for people that want to come to Christ and will accept Him as their personal Savior. That one more time the angels in heaven can sing and bring glory to God. See, sometimes as soon as something bad happens, the first thing we want to do, and I'm guilty, the first thing we want to do is say, Boy, the Lord's coming soon. I can't wait till the Lord comes. Instead of looking around and thinking about who in my family do I need to talk to? Who in my family that I need to talk to about the Lord Jesus Christ that I know they're not right with Him, that need to hear this word? That's one of the things we should be thinking. Instead of thinking about, it's going to be a great day when we leave here. But until we leave here, the Bible says that the Lord is performing a work in us even to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means to the second that He comes. Amen. He goes on in verse 2 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now what's Paul talking about here? Well, I'm going to tell you what Paul's talking about. Paul is talking about <coughs> Isaiah chapter, you don't have to turn there. Isaiah chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. Paul is quoting from Isaiah. This is what he's talking about. How ye for yet, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed at one another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof it. What he's talking about here is going to be the fall of Babylon. This happened after Isaiah's time. But this is the same thing. There's nothing new under the sun. In the coming days of the Lord, when He busts that sky open and He says, Come up hither, all these things are going.
and they're going to be destroyed. One day, God is going to build a new heaven and a new earth for His people. Do you look forward to that day? Yes, but what do we do while we're waiting on that day? We keep on keeping the faith. We keep on loving one another. We keep on loving the one that is outside the church. Because the one that is outside the church needs to be the one that is off, needs to be on the inside of the church. <clears throat> Ye are the children of light. We've been talking a lot about that light. Did I read verse 4? No, I did not. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness, that that day should not overtake you as a thief. We know that that day should not overtake us as a thief. We see all the signs. We're prepared. We are ourselves prepared for that day. But we know that we still have work to do. The same way that the Lord Jesus Christ is working on us till the day of His return, right up to the second He returns, we too have work to do in gathering the lost sheep. Amen? Verse 5. Ye are the children of the light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor are we of darkness. Ephesians 5 and 8 says this. You don't have to turn there. I did it for you. Did I find it? Anyway, therefore, verse 6, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. Watch. That literally means to watch that sky. Let us watch and be sober. See how many remember the signs of the ten virgins. The ten virgins, they had oil in their lamps. There was five of them that slept and slumbered. And they wasn't ready. And there were five of them that kept their lamps trimmed. They kept plenty of oil. But there were five that did not. And when the Lord came, they were not prepared to go. See, we need to get those that are out there, in here, prepare them to go. Because there's so many out there that think more of this life and pleasure than they do about where they'll spend it. How many know people like that? It's true. It's sad. But you know what? You and I used to be the same way. How many can say amen to that? Amen. We didn't think about where we was going to spend eternity. We was thinking about having fun, having a good old time. Amen. See, Paul's telling these, these, this young church the things to watch for, the things to do. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunk, drunk in the night. How many of y'all knows anything that... Do you ever hear your mama say, anything that happens after midnight is not good? Oh, yeah. We all heard that, I know. And I know I spent a lot of nights out after midnight. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters, that it was not good. <laughs> First hand experience. But thank God, I had a God a Savior that loved me, that cared enough for me, and that I cared enough to pray to Him. I just thank God for He goes on and He said, but let us who are of the day be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith See, we got to keep our faith and of love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. See, that's how we persevere. We lean on our, we lean on our faith. Faith in Him. Faith that we can fight this battle as long as
said, God, I can't do this. But I just got up and walked. And somehow, some way, he worked it all out for my good. Because he said what the devil meant for evil, I'll turn it around and I'll use it for your good. Did I learn some lessons through that stuff? Yes, I did. Did anybody learn any lessons when they went through those bad things? When they went through those, through those things that they said, Lord, I just can't do this? See, that's how God works. God's not a genie in a bottle. You don't just yank him out when you need him. You pray to him and you build a relationship with him. And you ask him to watch over you. You ask him to lead you and guide you through this life. And there's bumps in the road. Do you ever get on a road and have any bumps on it? I never have. It's got bumps in the road. And he teaches you how to swerve this bump and swerve that bump and this bump. And he makes the crooked path straight. That's what kind of God he is. He's a good God. He's a good God. And he loves his children. And as you was raising your children, did you ever have to correct them? Did you ever have to spank that little bottom? Me and Clarence was out there talking about getting that little old stitch and that paddle at school. Boy, did that hurt. But it didn't hurt me none and it helped make me who I am. He goes on in verse 9. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or we sleep, we should live together with Him. See, Paul was reassuring him that no matter if they've already died, if they've already died, see, we know that there's a lot of people in our family and in our life that have already died. But we know if they died in the Lord Jesus Christ, on that great day that that sky must open, they're going to come up before we are. And a guy told me one time, he said, you know why the dead in Christ will rise first? And I said, no, why? He said, because they got six feet farther to go than you do to get to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I guess that's true. See, they're the ones that died. They're the ones that have been waiting to see Almighty God. To see their Savior. The one that they lived their life for. <clears throat> Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. We should be comforting ourselves together and edifying one another even as also we do. And this word comes up again, and it says, We beseech you, brethren, to know them that labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. That word beseech means, I need you to get this. Hear me out. Get hold of this. I beseech you, brethren, to remember We labor. We get tired. We need to edify one another. We need to lift one another up in prayer. All throughout Scripture, Paul says, remember us in your prayers. See, that's what we was talking about this morning, or just a little bit ago. Every brother and sister you've got in here prays for you. And vice versa. Oh, God's love us. Make you want to cry sometimes. Yes, it does. He goes on in verse 13, and he said, Esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. That means keep them built up. Keep them built up so they can persevere, so they can keep going when the times are tough. Keep edifying one another. Keep saying, come on, sister. You got this. God's got you. Keep praying for them and lifting them up. How many times do you just need that hug? I wish I just had a hug right now. How many of you ever been alone, been by yourself, and say, Lord, will you just hug me? I just want to feel your presence. 
and your closeness because you needed that hug so bad and there was no one there to hug you. But see, we have the assurance that I've got 17, 20, 25, ever how many is in here? I've got the assurance that I can get them to hug me. I've got the assurance to know that they pray for me. That helps me to persevere and to keep on doing things I need to do for the Lord. Because like Paul said, it's to my gain if I go on, but I need to stay here for your sake. And I'm not saying I'm anything great. All I'm saying is I want to fulfill the will that God has called me to. And sometimes that gets hard, but I've got one in here, and I've got two in here, that every Wednesday night she says, pray for the message Sunday and pray for the pastor. God bless her heart. She never forgets that. And I've got another one in here, and he says the same thing. He never forgets that. You don't know how important your prayers are to the one that's reading the word and bringing the message because I get down. I'm human. I get discouraged. And I know when I found this message, I turned straight to it. And I know it's because of the prayers that you prayed for me and that I prayed for myself because of all the things going on in my life. And it fit perfect. And I said, God, you are so amazing. I sat back there and I cried for five minutes in my office because just because God had been so good to me and He answered our prayers. He goes on in verse 13, And esteem them very highly in love for their word's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. See, are we at peace among one another? Yes, we are. We have a very loving church. We have a very giving church. Are we small in numbers? Yes, we are. But sometimes it's better to be small in numbers and have God Almighty on your side than it is to have an army of 5,000. And the Old Testament proves that over and over and over and over. You don't need 5,000 men, Gideon. You don't even need 300 men, Gideon. I got it right that time, Ralph. You don't need 300. All you need is the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. And all you need to do is hang on to Him and persevere. And He will take you through to the next side. Because He is the God of all gods. He is the King of all kings. And there is nothing that is impossible to Him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Okay. Ralph, I'm pretty sure they wrote this one for me, buddy. Talk about some politicians. <laughs> now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. I warn them every day, don't I, Jane? Comfort the feeble-minded. Somebody comes in, you guys comfort me. Feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient towards all men. How long has God been patient with us? How long did it take God to get me to where I'm at today? How long did it take God to get you to where you're at today? Did it happen overnight? No, it didn't. I, I pray for Johnny every day, and I want you all to pray for him. When he comes to the Lord, he, there's a, he don't understand nothing about it, but he knew that the Holy Spirit had him under conviction, and he knew that he had to make his life right with God, and he knew that he needed to be baptized, and he did that. And he also knows that he needs to come to church. And he called me yesterday, and he was kind of upset and down. He said, I've got to work, Rick. I can't come. I said, Johnny, you just do what you've got to do, and you just keep building your prayer life and talking to God and working with God and praying in Jesus' name, and he'll work it out for your good. He said, thanks. See, that was edification. That was building him up. Just because he's saved and baptized, that don't make everything hunky-dory. But that makes him say, if he dies today, he's on his way to glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Whether you serve him one day or whether you serve him your whole life, the reward is all the same. Give God praise in this house today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He is a God that does not take sides. 
If you're His, you get it all. If you ain't, you get it all. And not in a good way. But, he, but he, he was saddened that he couldn't come. He said, I've got to get this stuff done. I've got to work. He mows grass on the side, and he's got a pretty good business. He said, these people will be tearing my doors down if I don't get this done after all this rain. I said, Johnny, do what you've got to do. Just keep building your relationship with God, and God will work it out for your good. He said, okay. He said, I'll be there next week. I said, that ain't no problem. So pray for him. Keep him lifted up. Did we pray for rain and something? No, huh? Do we pray for rain? And he won't have to mud. Well, you have to fight Ralph's already. He already had folded his arms back there. Hey, he said the other day, I hope Ralph's happy. I said, I am, and I'm sure Ralph is too. We gotta have rain. You know, so when people get high, and I've done that for a while too. I don't know what all that's like. I understood it. But you just keep doing what God what you gotta do is you keep going with God. Building the relationship. That's the most important thing, is you build a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You think he don't know that he made it rain for 14 days or every three days or five days or ever how many days it's gonna rain? You think he don't know that grass is gonna grow fast? You think he don't know if you got a grass mowing business that when it rains, grass is gonna grow? Of course he does. Anyway, and let's go on. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Now I made I made myself. I'm not going to say problems because I'll fail if I do that. I'm not going to holler at the TV anymore. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm going to go outside and say, Lord, you allow me to be there, so be it. Come what may. Just make sure that when the roll is called to yonder, that I am there. Because it is God that sets up kings and kingdoms. Amen. And he, he works it all out to his glory. Yep, I get mad at him. I get aggravated at him. Both sides. But here's the thing. God's got it all set up to where it comes out and works out to his end. Not ours. His end. And why should I worry? I'm saved. I'm right with God. And I know that I'm going to be with God. And I know that whatever I have to persevere and go through down here, I can persevere as long as I've got Christ with me. He'll take me through anything. We can go through anything with God. As long as we don't give up. Keep the helmet of salvation. The breastplate of faith. Just walk with God and stay with God. And He'll take you through. So for this, rejoice evermore. Praise God. Pray without ceasing. What does that mean? That means pray all the time about everything. Yeah. I mean, Mike was talking here. something in my mind to God. Seems like all the time. Mike said, that's kind of like praying without ceasing. You know? you're, you're hooked to God in your mind. And that, you know, I think there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, that makes sense. He goes on in verse 18. He says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. <clears throat> Here's a big one. Abstain from the very appearance of all evil. Stay away from it. It's like deadly poison. It poisons your mind. It's deceptive. And God said, get away from it. 
There are so many things that people, we was talking about this in Bible study the other night. People allow their conscience to be seared. When you do something that's not right with God, and you do it over and over and over and over, it becomes the norm. That's what our culture's doing today. They throw this stuff that we know is not right with God, but they throw it at you, throw it at you, throw it at you, cram it down your throat, and pretty soon you just give up and like, oh well. Yes it is. That's how Satan works. He deceives you. But we know by God's Word, Sin is sin. If God said it's sin, it's sin. And He said, get away from the very appearance of it. Amen. He goes on. Verse 23. And the very God of peace will sanctify you wholly. And I pray God for your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Did you hear that? The one that called you to him is faithful and he will do what he said he will do. This is how we comfort each other. Edify one another, love one another, knowing that God's faithful, knowing God's promises are going to take us through all the way to the end. Don't let nobody steal your crowns. And Satan's trying every day to get every one of them he can. He is a deceiver. Remember, if God said it's sin, it's sin. If God said keep it out of your life, keep it out of your life. Because it's deadly. It's deadly. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. See, we need to pray for each other because I don't know what you're going through all the time and I don't know what Shirley's going through and I don't know what Dorothy's going through. Well, I usually know what Dorothy's going through because she calls every day. But I don't know what Bill's going through. So we need to pray for each other continually. And when you have the chance, edify each other and know that each other loves each other. We all love each other. What does the Bible say about love? Love never fails. He goes on. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all of the holy brethren. Are you holy brethren today? I preach this to you. And I preached it to you in love. I preached it to you because this is God's will that we do these things to help us persevere till the Lord Jesus Christ comes to get us. We know the signs are there. We know the time is getting close. But until he comes, this is the things that Paul was telling them they need to do. And how simple was that? When you was